Hello everyone and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Tuesday, so we're going to be going over the waiver wire targets for week six. So it's going to be a pretty interesting week overall. I think there's a decent amount of good names if you really need somebody to plug in your lineup right now. I think there's a couple names that are important to look at if you need somebody for the future, if your team's already doing good. So it's going to be a very, very interesting waiver wire week. We'll start off with the quarterback position, and it's not a position I'm like too excited about this week, honestly. So I got two quarterbacks listed here. You could also take a look at Teddy Bridgewater and Taylor Heineke too as well if you want to go that direction, but these are the two guys that I do have. So first off is Carson Wentz, 25 out of 35 last night, 402 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, five rushing yards, did lose a fumble as well, ended up with 26.58 points in week five. Only rostered in 6% of ESPN leagues, 14% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against my Houston Texans in week 6, so it should be a pretty good matchup for him overall. Definitely somebody that you can consider streaming this week. And probably a guy you really only want to spend like 1% of your fab budget on this week if you do need a quarterback. The next up we got Geno Smith. Obviously came in for Russell Wilson after his injury. 10 out of 17. 131 yards, one touchdown, one interception that really wasn't his fault. 23 rushing yards, ended up with 11.54 points in week five. Only rostering about 1% of leagues, goes against the Pittsburgh Steelers in week six. Not the best matchup in the world, but not the worst either. He's going to have some good weapons around him. He's probably going to be a guy that can get you 18 to 20 fantasy points in a six point per passing touchdown league. A guy that's not going to kill your team overall on the week. If you have Russell Wilson, a guy that you can definitely spend a little bit of fab on, but not too much. Honestly, he's probably more of a one week option for me. Hopefully somebody else pops up that's a little bit better next week. But if you need a quarterback, he's not the worst option in the world. Then we move over to the running back position. Like I said, quarterback was very short this week. So my top running back for this week is going to be Devontae Booker. He played on 88% of the snaps after Saquon Barkley left the game. 16 carries, 42 yards, one touchdown, four targets, three receptions, 16 yards, and another touchdown. So two touchdowns in total on the day. 20.8 points in week five. Roster in 4% of ESPN leagues, 7% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Rams in week six. Not the best matchup in the world, but not like the worst against the run either. So there's a good chance that Devontae Booker starts once again. Obviously, Saquon Barkley is out with an ankle injury for at least this week. So if you're looking for a running back that you want to play this week, Devontae Booker is probably going to be the number one option for me. And I think he's probably going to be at least two weeks that Saquon Barkley's out. So you're going to get at least a starter at two weeks for running back if your team is desperate at that running back position. But with that being said, he's probably a guy I spend like up to 20% of my fab budget on. Just depends on if you need a running back or not. But definitely a good option for this week and probably next week as well. Then we got to talk about the other running back that's kind of getting an increased playing time. It's Daryl Williams. Clyde edwards Slayer is going to be out for a couple weeks now. Not exactly sure how many weeks it'll be, but we at least know it's going to be a couple. So probably at least three weeks. But it's going to be him and Jerick McKinnon in the backfield. He played 43% of snaps this past game against the Buffalo Bills. Not a really good judgment mark since they were down in that game. Probably a game script that favored McKinnon just a little bit more. Even though Darrell Williams has played you know, on passing downs and pass protection and everything like that as well. So he had five carries for 27 yards. Five targets, three receptions, 18 yards. 7.5 points in week five. Roster in 8% of ESPN leagues. 18% of Yahoo leagues goes against the Washington football team in week six. So as good as we thought their defense was, it's not been there yet this year, but I think there's an opportunity for Daryl Williams here, but I think it's going to be a pretty good split backfield as well with him and Jarek McKinnon. So that's why he's not the number one on my list. Going back to Devonte Booker real quick, Gary Brightwell was active for that game and he saw 0% of the snaps. So not really concerned about him. They could have used him if they really wanted to, and it was pretty much Devontae Booker the whole time. Daryl Williams, however, once Clyde edwards Hilaire left the game, it was pretty split. So, yes, he could be the starting running back for the Chiefs for a couple extra weeks than Devontae Booker, but how much value is that going to have? And who's to say the Chiefs just don't throw the ball more because that's something that definitely could happen as well. So Darrell Williams, he's probably like a 10 to 15% of my fab budget type of guy. I know there's other people out in the air in the industry that are going to tell you break the bank for Darrell Williams, but if you really don't need a running back, there's no point in doing it. If you need a running back, I'd rather go with Devontae Booker this week. 
Then we got to talk about Khalil Herbert just a little bit. Played 53% of snaps, 18 carries, 75 yards. A lot of these carries did come in the second half of the game, in the fourth quarter of the game. So take that with a grain of salt as well. But he was a little bit more involved in the offense than we thought. He was a guy that I briefly, briefly mentioned last week when we were talking about Damian Williams. 7.5 points in week five, roster in 5% of ESPN leagues, 19% of Yahoo leagues. Has a very nice matchup against the Packers in week six. However, it's probably going to be a negative game script, so it's not going to favor him. It's probably going to favor Damian Williams just a little bit more. So at this point in time, Khalil Herbert's probably somebody I'd be comfortable spending 3 to 5% of my fab budget on. It is important to note that Tariq Cohen is eligible to return after this week, so we'll see if he's back or not. David Montgomery is probably going to be out at least a month, so Khalil Herbert could get involved in this backfield, and if he starts out producing Damian Williams, he could be a real asset, so... He's probably somebody I'm looking to pick up if I, my team already has a good record and I'm not trying to find somebody that kind of saved my team, essentially, or, you know, fill in a running back spot right away. Then we'll move over to Alex Collins. He played 71% of snaps this past week, 15 carries, 47 yards, three targets, two receptions, 25 yards receiving. He had 9.2 points in week five, rostered about 42% of ESPN links, 37% of Yahoo links, goes against Pittsburgh in week six. There is a chance that Chris Carson misses this game. There's a chance that they'll run the ball just a little bit more with Geno Smith at quarterback. So Alex Collins definitely in play as well. If we hear a little bit more news about Chris Carson before your waiver wire period runs, you can up your bid. But at this point in time, probably looking at about like 5 to 7% of your fab budget on Alex Collins. Definitely a high-value handcuff, if nothing else. But if Chris Carson is to miss once again this week, you're looking at a potential starter for your roster. Then we'll move over to Kenny Gainwell. Not a very good week for him. And played 24% of snaps, two carries, 16 yards, three targets, one reception, eight yards. Nothing special there. 3.4 points in week five. Yes, he's going to have some volatility overall. 37% roster in ESPN, 41% in Yahoo. Goes against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week six. So, first of all, no team can run on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, we're not looking at Mr. Gainwell for his rushing ability. It's only going to be in the receiving game this week. You know, if you need a low-end running back too, especially in a PPR type of setting, this could be your guy that you could plug and play this week. They're going to be losing to Tampa Bay. I don't know any nicer way to say that. So he's probably going to be on the field a little bit more, see some targets, see some receptions, and have a potential to pay off in that regard. So Kenny Gainwell, is that somebody you should look at this week? Potentially. But if he's still out there in your league, you can probably spend, you know, probably 2 to 3% of your fab budget on him. I doubt a lot of people are going to go after him this week, especially after the down week. And you might even see in some leagues that, you know, he's close up here to this 40%. People might just look at his stat line this week and say, well, he didn't do anything and then drop him too. So be on the lookout for that as well. Then I believe last but not least at that running back position, we got Brandon Bolden played 38% of snaps. He had two carries for 25 yards, four targets, four receptions for six yards. Not the greatest stat line in the world, but ended up with 7.1 points in week five in PPR settings, obviously. Roster in 8% of ESPN leagues, 9% of Yahoo leagues. Damian Harris did leave this game twice with injury. Supposedly he's fine, but he's day-to-day at this point in time. If Damian Harris cannot go, we're going to see Brandon Bolden. We're going to see Ramondre Stevenson. Yes, Ramondre Stevenson had a, like 11 carries in this game, but he got like 23 yards on him. Not very good by any means. And that was against, you know, a Houston Texans defense that's not the best in the world. As a sad Texans fan myself. He's rostering 8% of ESPN leagues, 9% of Yahoo leagues, and goes against the Dallas Cowboys in week six. There is a chance the Patriots are losing this game. Brandon Bolden's that pass catching back, so he could be on the field a little bit more and see some value that way as well. So if you need just somebody to throw in your lineup because you got some bye weeks, or even going forward, he's going to be a nice little bye week filler in certain matchups. So Brandon Bolden, 1% to 2% of your fab budget is what I'd be willing to spend on him this week. Then we can move it over to the wide receivers. We got to start with the big name, and it's Mr. Kadarius Tony. Played on 54% of snaps this past week. 13 targets, 10 receptions, 189 yards. Crazy, crazy day right there. One carry for seven yards as well. 29.6 fantasy points in PPR settings in week five. 12% rostered on ESPN, 18% on Yahoo. And he goes against the Rams in week six. So not the best matchup in the world going against the Rams, especially if all these other wide receivers are out. Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, and Darius Slayton. Then he's probably going to draw Jalen Ramsey in coverage because he's the only wide receiver at that point in time. However, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, they could be back from their hamstring injuries. Kenny Galladay dealing with his knee injury. He might play. He might not play. 
who knows at this point in time. But Kadarius Tony, we've seen him back to back weeks, a significant workload for him. We've seen significant production as well. He did throw a punch and get ejected out of this game, but he's not expected to be suspended or anything like that. Probably just fine. So Kadarius Tony going forward looks like an option that we could potentially play in our lineup and could potentially pay off as a league winner. So at this point in time, I'd be willing to spend 15 to 20 percent of my fab budget on Kadarius Tony, especially if I'm a team that's already has a good record. I'm a team that's three and two, a team that's four and one, a team that's five and zero, oh, because then you don't have to play him right away. But eventually, the Giants are going to realize, hey, this guy's too good to not have on the field, even when all these other wide receivers come back, and he's going to be a feature part of their offense for the rest of the season. And especially with Saquon Barkley being out, you need playmakers on this team, especially with all these other guys being out. Kadarius Toney is going to be a very valuable part of this team. Then next up, we have Tim Patrick played on 95% of snaps, nine targets, seven receptions, 89 yards. So a solid little week. This week in week 5, 15.9 points. Rostered in about 30% of leagues on both ESPN and Yahoo. Goes against the Raiders in week 6. Should, should be a good matchup there. Probably going to go against Amik Robertson in coverage who obviously, you know, he's like a second year corner. Not a high draft pick. Nothing like that. Nothing special. You know, he's lower on the depth chart. So this is going to be a matchup that favors Tim Patrick. Especially height wise as well too. You're looking at this matchup. Casey Hayward's probably going to be on Cortland Sutton most of the day. So Tim Patrick could be the primary beneficiary in this game. If you're looking for a wide receiver that you can play this week and potentially down the road as well, Tim Patrick is worth 3 to 5% of your fab budget. Then next up, we have Tyrell Williams, who actually hasn't played since week one. He's been dealing with a concussion. He's been on IR. He is eligible to return this week. If he does return, Quintez Cephas broken collarbone now. He has a chance to be the number one wide receiver for the Lions once again. Owned in 18% of ESPN leagues, 12% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Cincinnati week six if he does end up playing. So Tyrell Williams, this is just purely an upside play. Spend 1% of your fab budget on him. You might even be able to get him after waivers run. But this is a guy stash on your bench, especially if you're a team that's already especially if your team that's already has a good record. So it's not a guarantee for anything, but it's an option that could pay off in the long term as well. So just something to keep in mind this week. We'll see if he comes back off the IR or not this week in general. Then another guy that's been on IR the whole year is Rashad Bateman. I know a lot of people were expecting him to return last night. Didn't end up happening. He is rostered in 13% of ESPN leagues, 24% of Yahoo leagues, goes against the Chargers in week six. If you are picking up Rashad Bateman this week, if he's active this week, you do not play him in week six. But this is a guy that could potentially help your team down the road. Sammy Watkins did leave the game last night with a hamstring injury. So there's a chance that he misses a couple weeks now because it's Sammy Watkins. This is just what ends up happening. I bet a bunch of people are probably surprised he actually lasted a week five before getting injured, but... You know, I don't wish any ill harm on Sammy Watkins as much as he might have screwed me in DFS last night. I do wish him health, safety for him and his family. So hopefully he's able to recover soon. But Rashad Bateman, this is a good scenario for him. I do not expect him to come in right away and take 60 plus percent of the snaps. I do not expect him to come in right away and get five targets a game right off the bat. Temper your expectations with this guy. Have him on your roster, sit him on your bench, let the process work before you start trusting him in fantasy overall. But with that being said, he's probably a guy you spend like 1% to 2% of your fab budget on. Probably a name that's going to be pretty popular on waivers this week. And then I will mention, you know, just another name too is Amon Ra St. Brown for the Detroit Lions. We did talk about Tyrell Williams a bit, but he's seen back-to-back weeks with eight targets. So if you got need a wide receiver that can play right away this week, Amon Ross St. Brown could be your guy, probably a 1% to 2% of your fab budget type of player as well. Then we'll get moved over to the tight end position. We'll start off with Hunter Henry, and he's played 62% of snaps in week five. Eight targets, six receptions, 75 yards, one touchdown. 19.5 points in week five. Roster in 36% of ESPN leagues, 46% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Dallas in week six. So it's going to be a game that they're probably going to have to throw the ball quite a bit. Hunter Henry's been shown to be one of the top targets on their team outside of Jacoby Myers. So he's looking pretty good at this point in time. They're mainly using Johnny Smith to block. So great news for Hunter Henry at this point in time as well. And with that being said, if you need a tight end right now, 
Hunter Henry is somebody that you should be spending like five to eight percent of your fab budget on. Maybe just a little bit more if you really, really need that tight end at this point in time. Then next up, we have Dan Arnold. Played 73% of snaps this week. Eight targets, six receptions, 64 yards. Ended up with 10.4 points in week five. He did lose a fumble as well. Roster 1% of ESPN leagues, 4% of Yahoo leagues goes against the Dolphins in week six. It should be a decent little matchup there. We've seen him be very involved in this offense since coming over from Carolina. We've seen the Jacksonville offense target the tight end position a little bit this year, especially with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. So Dan Arnold guy that I would be willing to play at this point in time. It is something to note. He does have a bye week in week seven, so maybe a one-week starter. Maybe some of you carry through the bye week. So he's not somebody you're really looking to spend a bunch of fab on, probably 1% to 2% of your fab budget, if that. Then last but not least, we got to talk about Ricky Seals-Jones. So he ended up taking that Logan Thomas role and pretty much playing every snap because that's what Logan Thomas does anyway. So that's a very, very good sign. Play 99% of snaps. Eight targets, five receptions, 41 yards. This is actually a better stat line than I probably expected from him. Supposedly he had a touchdown that was called back as well. So something to look out for there. He's always been kind of this athletic tight end, former wide receiver. 9.1 points in week five. Rostered 1% of ESPN leagues, 2% of Yahoo leagues. So there's a pretty good chance that he's out there. That is a typo. It says he does play against the Dolphins, which was from Dan Arnold. Ricky Seals Jones does play against the Chiefs. It's a little bit of a revenge game there too as well. And the Chiefs defense has been giving up a lot of points and allowing a lot of production to tight ends in general. So Ricky Seals Jones, probably a 1% of your fab budget type of guy, but a guy that you can plug and play right away in week six. Then last but not least, we have the defenses to consider streaming this week. So we got the Indianapolis Colts. They go against the Houston Texans. They are rostered in 44% of ESPN links, 48% of Yahoo leagues. So 50-50 chance that they're out there, but if they're out there, definitely a defense to consider picking up. I know they are really hurting at the cornerback position. Hopefully they get Rocky Sin back next week. Hopefully Xavier Rhodes was just a little concussion and that was it. That's definitely going to make a big difference for their defense overall. Not sure exactly what happened to Kari Willis that game or if they were just limiting his snap count since he's been out for a while. Then we got the Cincinnati Bengals, rostered in 17% of ESPN leagues, 9% of Yahoo leagues. They go against the Detroit Lions this week, so it should be a pretty good matchup for them. Middle of the pack defense, but definitely a defense that will end up being in my top 12 this week. And then if you're super, super desperate, you can look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are rostered in 1% of leagues on both ESPN and Yahoo. They're not a good defense by any means, but they are playing against the Miami Dolphins this week, who have not played very well as a team overall. Jacoby Brissett left the game with a hamstring injury, came back with that hamstring injury. So if he's the quarterback, he's not going to be very mobile in this game, first of all. Second of all, Tua could be back in this game. And even if he's back, he might be a little gun shy in his first game back. And he's still not the greatest quarterback in the world. I know a lot of people want Tua to be this great quarterback, but he really hasn't shown anything this far. So in terms of defenses go, if you really, really are desperate and need to stream one, Jacksonville, you could do a lot, lot worse, at least this week in week six. But even with these defenses, you know, I spend 2% of my fab budget max on for probably the Colts and the Bengals, and then Jaguars be like 0 to 1% of my fab budget since I don't think anybody else is really going to be targeting them this week unless they're also watching this video. But with that being said, these are my waiver wire picks for week 6. Once again, the threshold is below 50% on both ESPN and Yahoo to make the list. So if there's somebody out there in your league that wasn't on this list and you have a question about them, just feel free to leave it down in the comment below. Definitely will answer that question as soon as possible. But with that being said, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Definitely would appreciate it. It helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers. Helping you with your fantasy football teams. Helping you with DFS, whether it's NBA or NFL. Talking all the different football news, once again, there's a ton of injuries this week. See if I can sneak it in another video or if it's going to come up in the starts and sits. But definitely something to monitor throughout the week. And with that being said, if you are a new or current subscriber, be sure to hit the notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. Also, something to note, I am going to stop doing the top five performer videos on Monday. Obviously, it wasn't up this Monday. But... That video hasn't done quite as well. It doesn't seem like people enjoy it quite as much. If you do enjoy that video, if you want me to continue it, just leave a comment down below and let me know, and I will definitely consider doing that as well. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And then last but not least, special little shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. Definitely do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. 
definitely means a lot to me. And I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.